Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest in this segment is Anna Maria and Anna. Anna <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Anna Najor. Did I do it right? Anna Najor. Anna Najor. Damn! Director of Campaign for Cannabis Amnesty. And she's also a partner at Ruby Schiller, Anna Najor, De Giuseppe Barristers, and sits on the board of the directors of the Open Democracy Project. Anna Maria, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, Anna Maria, you, your group, and your groups, I guess more broadly, are advocates for the idea of pardoning Canadians with convictions for simple possession of cannabis. And uh, I, I have to say that I'm very personally interested in seeing that happen. Um, what exactly is the mindset of the government at this point, given that it's post August, October 17th, and cannabis is now legal recreationally, medically, et cetera? Yeah, so the, the sense that I'm getting from both the public statements that have been made by various uh, high ranking members of the government, as well as my own conversations with, uh, through my advocacy work with members of the, um, the, the relevant offices, is that this is not an issue that is lost on them. They recognize the importance on Canadians, uh, to the lives of Canadians that this issue has. And they also recognize that this is a logical next step mm -hmm. that follows from cannabis uh, legalization. So there's a sense of openness um, and there's a sense of understanding uh, uh, the profound impact that cannabis conviction records have on people's lives, as well as just a sheer number of people at this impact. There are approximately 500,000 Canadians with cannabis convictions on their records. Mm -hmm. We're not that big of a country. This is a huge number of people that are impacted by this. So my sense is that philosophically, ideologically, the government is not opposed to this. Mm. But as we know, it takes more than that to get legislation passed. So there's a lot of strategic considerations, there are timing considerations, and then there's also the nitty-gritty details on how to actualize something like this. Sure. Um, as an individual who has uh, had a uh, cannabis conviction for possession and has subsequently received the pardon, um, it I can tell you that the limitations it placed on my life uh, our extent to this day. In fact, if you want to apply to be a director of a public company in Canada, you have to disclose your record whether you received a pardon or not. Mm -hmm. and there's obviously implications for that. And so right. uh, a pardon from the Canadian government isn't worth the paper it's written on, even for from the perspective of somebody who's trying to be a global citizen and business person, because mm -hmm. those challenges remain because those pardons are not recognized by governments external to Canada, especially in the United States. That's so there's correct. a different a, additional burden of sort of compliance and whitewashing that has right. to be gone through and it follows you for the rest of your life. So, you know, my mother was probably right when she said, well, just make it easy on yourself and don't break the law. <laughs> However, in that the law has now admitted its fallacy by becoming, making cannabis legal, uh, it does follow that if it's not illegal now, it shouldn't have been illegal then right. in terms of the context of human rights and liberties. Well, I, I would agree with that. I also think, uh, just going back to your mom's advice, if you don't want the consequences, don't break the law. The reality is that the consumption of cannabis is something that is so widespread in our society. There are countless people that are doing this and they're not receiving the consequences of it. When we look at the numbers of the people that do suffer the consequences of participating in activity that is so widespread across the population, it is uh, absurdly disproportionate. So you're looking at largely people from racialized communities, racialized neighborhoods, racialized backgrounds, and indigenous communities. Those are the people that are disproportionately bearing the burden of living with an unlawful, uh, with, with the consequences of participating in an unlawful uh, uh, activity. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, it is, it is unfair that there are people who have to suffer for something that a lot of other people are doing and they don't have to face those similar consequences. I could not agree more. We're on the same page here, <laughs> aren't we? Okay, so what is the process? What do you what what do you see happening in terms of is this something that you're actively moving to get into the government conversation in Absolutely. terms of legislation? Absolutely. So um, we've been working quite closely with um, Murray Rankin, an NDP member of parliament who on October the 4th tabled a bill called the um, Cannabis Expungement uh, of Records Act. And it's, um, 
it's a bill that seeks to go beyond what your experience is, which is apply for a pardon and receive a pardon on an individual basis. What we are advocating for is a whole scale, wholesale expungement of records, which means a deletion of records from people's, uh, from the deletion of entries from people's records and the corresponding uh, police notes and records uh, attached to that so that they, they don't have to be concerned about the deficiencies in a pardon the way that you were and the way that you experienced. Um, I think it's very interesting and very telling that you were saying uh, that a, c a pardon is not worth the paper that it's written on. And I think that that is why we were requesting that part that the strategy in for this particular issue go beyond merely a pardon and it go to expunging the records mm. because people deserve to put this behind them once and for all in totality. There is absolutely no reason why these records should remain. Right. That's interesting. Well, I got to say, I support you 100% in that well, endeavor. We should get you to do an endorsement on our website. I would love to. It would be my pleasure. Um, I could also tell you that Cam Batley, uh, who is yes. the CCO of Aurora, has yes. expressed to me in no uncertain terms that he very much supports the idea of cannabis amnesty. Oh, absolutely. Aurora has been a huge uh, support, a huge sponsor. They mm -hmm. actually provided us with uh, $50,000 um, in order to give us sort of a, a, a war chest, a modest war chest, but mm. uh, a war chest to be able to undertake the work that we're doing because we are all volunteers um, and there are expenses associated with this kind of advocacy. They've offered us um, one of their, uh, one of our advisory board positions um, is occupied by Jonathan Zaid of Aurora, oh, okay. yep. and so they've been providing us with strategic advice as well. He offers a wealth of information and uh, and resources uh, given his advocacy background. So we've gotten a lot of fantastic reception from industry. Aurora being uh, sort of our our. Um, uh, one of the first to approach us and to provide us with generous support. We also have a, uh, a, cam a sub campaign that we've launched with uh, Doja Haiku uh, called Pardon.life, and it's actually a product line uh, called Pardon. Uh, where the proceeds for the sale of all of the items uh, on the on the pardon.life website go to fund the campaign for cannabis amnesty and all of these initiatives we are driving people to go to our website to learn the facts um, about the injustices that have happened as a result of cannabis prohibition and uh, we're asking people to sign a petition that we can ultimately present to the government now we've been fortunate enough to not only work with uh, members of the opposition so um, the the NDP opposition so Murray Rankin in support of his bill. I was in Ottawa with him on the, on the 4th um, when it was announced that he would be tabling it. But also we've had uh, quite productive discussions with uh, members of the, the, the government and I, I do believe that there is uh, openness there um, and it's a matter of now leveraging the uh, impetus to get it done. Very cool. Okay, well, um, anything that we can do to help you here, I volunteer all of my resources, including Fantastic. my time. <laughs> and so we'll be looking forward to participating in this and I'd uh, love to see it happen. We're going to leave it there for now, Anna Maria, and we're going to have you back regularly till we get this sorted out. Thanks for joining Thank me today. Thank you so much.